my name is Prashant G. Boyer. I'm from Washington DC area and currently working as senior consultant with Witham Smith & Brown. So I started working on SharePoint uh, back in 2009 and since then I have worked on Share, like all versions of SharePoint that are out there and I see myself as uh, a jack of all trades. So I have done pretty much everything except branding. So my first uh, interaction with SharePoint Framework happened in uh, Microsoft Developer Kitchen uh, back in February 2016. And that was the first time they showed uh, the early bits and uh, they let us play with that. Uh, in return, we had to provide them feedback. So that was the first time I got introduced with it. So as of today, I will say it's definitely a right step in the right direction. Uh, and the way or the strategy or the vision Microsoft have is really good because that's where all other uh, industries or all other uh, uh, e developer ecosystem are going where they are using more and more open source tools. So you're not tied up with, let's say, uh, enterprise specific tools like Visual Studio. That's really good. So I went to the roadmap uh, on their site uh, and so far it looks good. So they're talking about introducing better ALM story. They're also talking about uh, supporting the single page app in near future. They're also talking about uh, introducing uh, the SharePoint framework to SharePoint on-prem, which is I think uh, one, of the, one, one of the biggest uh, feature or step will, will be. The local development, uh, that's my favorite part because now with SharePoint Framework, I can pretty much do development on any machine and also I don't need access to the internet. Uh, so I'm no longer tied up with, you know, you need a specific machine which needs to have like specific uh, RAM or specific servers running. That's not the case. That's my favorite part about it. So one thing I will add is uh, the ability to develop uh, web parts uh, for a specific site. Uh, because the real competitor for SharePoint framework as of today in SharePoint Online is uh, the various methods people use, writing content editors and script editor web parts just to get things that you wanted. And a lot of organizations, uh, they have like some kind of silos and they don't have always access to uh, the tenant admins. So to do deploy any web part, if I had to work with tenant admins all the time, uh, it may not work for a bigger organization. So people want to have like some kind of flexibility where, okay, this is your site collection, you can play with it, you can do whatever you want and you can build your own uh, solutions for it. The one thing I will change uh, is uh, the messaging uh, that's happening from Microsoft uh, because what I personally seeing is Microsoft is doing a really great job in promoting Power Apps and Flow, especially Office 365 team. They are going to a lot of events. They are uh, like uh, arranging a lot of uh, Twitter jams. They are also uh, uh, like arranging a lot of sessions. But same is not true for SharePoint Framework. Like you hear from Microsoft about SharePoint Framework in Build Conference or in Ignite. Uh, there is always patterns and practices call is there, uh, but uh, the real face time with SharePoint Product Group is missing. So from developer point of view, I think the biggest challenge is, uh, especially if you are doing server-side development from long time, getting used to the tool chain. Because there are a lot of terms that you may never have heard of, and you may like a little, feel a little bit frightened, like, oh, what's this? Now, just to write a single web part, now I had to learn all these six or seven things, and I had to like do go through this setup. So that is the biggest uh, challenge, I think, from developer point of view. And from the organization's point of view is, uh, so one way Microsoft is announcing, okay, Office 365 is a software as a service, so you use it, and you shouldn't be like customizing too many things in SharePoint. And this is a framework to write custom things. So there is a lot of uh, uncertainty, or people are like kind of playing water, wait and watch game, just to see how, how this uh, framework gets matured, and whether we should really invest in time and deploy the solution using that. And recent announcement from Microsoft uh, on a couple of other development models also did not help. Uh, like they announce about access services, they announce about uh, sandbox solutions. So some people, some organizations, a little bit, uh, they are playing wait and watch game right now, since it's a fairly new. And I personally think definitely there will be a single page application support. 
Because right now, if you have a web uh, framework where you just have, can create web parts, a lot of people may not use that right away. Because uh, there is alternate method available, which a lot of people are using, especially developers from last uh, three years, ever since uh, they are started moving to Office 365 and they announced the add-in model. And uh, add-in model, there are some restrictions, like you don't have the full control on the page. Whereas using some other methods, like injecting script uh, editor web parts or content editor web parts, you can pretty much do a lot of things using uh, the Microsoft REST APIs. So if that story is, is good and it's there, and it's readily available, whereas here, okay, I can do this web part, but I can use this framework, but I can only build a web part. For rest of the stuff, I had to use something else. So for developers, my advice is go through the Microsoft documentation on SharePoint framework. It's one of the best written documentation because not only Microsoft folks are writing it, uh, some of the folks from community are also helping to make it updated. So if you go through it, develop your first Hello World exp like web part. Don't like, just get like bogged down by, okay, I need to learn all this stuff. There are a lot of uh, uncertainty, like people think, okay, just to write a simple web part, I had to learn TypeScript, I had to learn, uh, let's say, React, or I had to learn Angular, that's not true. Like you can use any framework of your choice or you can simply go with JavaScript or jQuery as well. So just go with that flow and see how's the experience is. And once you go with that, like, you know, it's like, uh, riding your first bicycle or riding your first bike. Once you do that once, you feel it, okay, now I can do it. And you can then start implementing or developing some additional uh, or more complex web parts. So the biggest challenge I think uh, when it comes to adoption of SharePoint uh, in developers is the landscape is changing so much in Office 65. Uh, like Microsoft is doing a really good job of announcing new products like a team, uh, then there is a groups, there is a flow, there is a power apps. So what's happening is uh, to do like uh, implement customization, I have to now fight a war on five different fronts. Not only I had to learn SharePoint framework, I had to learn what's happening with Teams, I had to learn what's happening with Power Apps, I had to learn what's happening with Flow, I had to learn what's happening with uh, Azure Functions as well, you know. And with uh, increasing adoption of uh, Office 65, more and more organizations are spending less and less money in customization. And what they are expecting, uh, especially this is true in Washington DC area is, you don't have a lot of people to you know, write customization for SharePoint or Office 65. You have a couple of people, and then uh, if, if you are in the same board, then you have, that means you have to keep track of everything that's happening latest and greatest. And somehow I feel since SharePoint framework is only for web parts, uh, a lot of time it doesn't get the focus or attention that it should get from the developers.